Hi everyone, it's Helen here from Bodywork Pilates and I just want to run through a short 20 minute sequence of Pilates that will help to keep you mobile and flexible and will just open up some tensions, some tightnesses and, uh, and just give you something to do for a little bit of self-care in these uh, strange times. So I'm going to keep it fairly low level. Um, this isn't a time for us to get fancy and I want it to be a safe practice for as many people as possible that can do this. However, I would say that if you are unsure of your ability, so particularly if you have things like unmedicated high blood pressure, if you have um, any osteopenia or osteoporosis, if you have any um, sciatica that's perhaps flaring up today, if you have any disc issues in the lumbar spine, I would perhaps suggest that you get just the, the all clear from a medical professional before you do too much. This should be okay for most people, but I just want to make sure that those that may have some of those issues are just aware. And obviously I will modify as much as possible. Uh, please do stay with the appropriate modifications and we will do, as I say, an all round practice that really should just help to open up any tensions and tightnesses. So I hope you've got your mat out. You're gonna very carefully lay yourself down onto the floor, lying on the back with the knees bent. Take your time. Okay, so once you're on your mat, just take a moment to establish the distance between your feet, which wants to be about hip distance. So in line with the hip bones, that face the ceiling, not the width of your bottom, but the hip bones. So have your feet and your knees about that wide. You don't really want to have them too close towards you because that might put some strain in the knees. So a comfortable distance away and keep the ball of the big toe, the little toe and the centre of the heel all resting evenly into the ground beneath you. Let the hands rest on the floor at the side of the body, palms down. And let the back of the neck be long as you let the shoulders and the head rest. So take a moment, perhaps even close your eyes, and just think for a moment about how the body feels lying on the floor. Notice where you think your tensions, your tightnesses are. What do you notice about being here? Perhaps you feel you're a little lopsided. Do you feel there's a little bit more weight to one side of the pelvis or one side of the shoulder blades than there is the other? Do you feel like your head is resting evenly? Or if you were to look up, would you look a little bit more to the right or the left? So just noticing all those little things that make us the person that we are. And then let's talk for a moment about the breathing. So as we lie here, allowing the body to rest to the floor, think about the breathing. And it's a specific breathing pattern that we use in Pilates. We inhale through the nose, and we exhale through nose or mouth. I'm gonna leave that entirely up to you. But just as you lie there, take your hands and just place them onto your rib cage. So just heels of the hands towards the outer edge of the rib cage, fingers facing towards each other. And put just a slight pressure, the smallest amount of pressure into the heels of the hands. Now I'd like you to direct your breath into the heels of the hands. So as you inhale, Feel your ribs gently opening underneath the hands, widening, flaring even. And then as you exhale, feel them soften in again. So as your ribs expand as you inhale, the fingers gently draw and slide away from each other. And as you exhale, they just naturally draw back to the midline. Inhale and open. Exhale and close. Now, just before you inhale again, place your hands onto your abdominal area. Place the fingers together at the pubic bone, the thumbs towards the navel, and the heels of the hands out towards the hip bones, creating this sort of diamond shape with your hands. Now imagine though that the hands are still resting on the ribs. So continue to, re to breathe into the imaginary hands on the ribs. And 
and not into the hands on the belly. So we're looking to keep the abdominal area from belly button to pubic bone quiet and still as we inhale, allowing instead the ribs to expand. And then we exhale, ribs soften, belly stays nice and still. Okay. Imagine now that the hands are a bowl of water. And as you breathe out, press your lower back down into the floor, dropping your thumbs deeper as the pubic bone just presses the fingers up a little. If it was a bowl of water, you'd be trying to tip the water over your chest. And as you inhale, just return your bowl of water, your hands, back to level. As you breathe out, tip the bowl of water over the chest with the thumbs deep and down, fingers are pressed up from the pubic bone, and inhale, release. Now do that with the breath. So as you exhale, Ribs soften in, pubic bone lifts, front edge of the body shortens. As you inhale, ribs expand, pubic bone presses forward, hands come back to level. Do a couple more of those. So we move our spine from a natural curve into imprint, so flattening the back with imprint. And as you inhale, we return the spine to neutral or that bowl of water back to level. One more time. and then just come back to level, whatever your level is. And for most people, with the ribs nice and soft, it's just a fingertip or a flat hand of space around the low back. It's nothing more than that, really, but it's important that we keep that. So keeping your hands just where they are, take a breath in, and as you breathe out, slightly tighten the area underneath the hands, as if you're slightly pulling the whole of the abdominal area down, but don't tip your water. So we don't imprint the back to do that. We're just tightening the abdominals. It's like wearing a corset. It's like trying to draw away from the material of the clothing that you're wearing. And then keep that slight corset, about 30% of your utter maximum, 30% of that. Just keep that as you continue to breathe into your ribcage. This is why we wanted to keep the belly nice and still earlier. So can you keep that slight wrapping corset of tension around the center of the body and still breathe into your ribs? So try that a few times. And then to this, we add movement. So bowl of water, absolutely perfectly still on a slightly tightened surface and keeping that absolutely still, as you breathe out, peel your right foot from the floor and extend your leg forward. Keep a small gap between the heel and the floor as you do that. As you inhale, bend the knee, replace the foot all the way back down and change side. So exhale as you peel the left leg and extend the left leg forward. Inhale as you bend, replace the foot where it came from. So we're looking to keep absolutely level and still across the back of the pelvis. Looking to keep our bowl of water absolutely perfectly still. Relaxing those shoulders, maintaining that length of the back of the neck, that slight corset continues to wrap around. Inhale. Just do that a couple more times. One more time. And then come back to center, replace, change nothing except place the hands onto the floor at the side of the body. The feet and the knees are still hip distance apart. Pelvis is still level. Our bowl of water is still level. We've still got that slight corset wrapping around. The breath is still moving into the ribs. We're going to add a little bit of tension to the inner thighs, as if you were holding a ball between the knees. So just holding a ball between the knees, a little bit of tension to the inner thighs, and thinking now of drawing up through the diamond muscles of the pelvic floor. So the pelvic floor muscles run front to back, tailbone to pubic bone, from sitting bone to sitting bone. 
So that diamond that we placed on the top of the body earlier, that's pretty much what our pelvic floor muscles look like. So just drawing north to south, east to west, a very slight upward draw. You may feel that your bottom tightens up as well, just a little bit. And from here, we're going to really definitely try to tip that bowl of water over the chest. So as you exhale, think about tipping the water over the chest and then press a little bit down into the feet and peel along the spine to the base of the shoulder blades. Take care not to push heavily into the neck, just over the shoulder blades. Your bottom will squeeze really tightly as it tries to drive you up. As you inhale, reach out through the front edge of your knees, firm into those feet. As you exhale, melt your spine bone by bone back down. Release and return the spine back to a natural curve. And then repeat. So as you exhale, think about really definitely tipping that water over your chest. When you can't tip the water anymore, then press down firmly into the feet. Continue to tip the pelvis up and roll bone by bone, rib by rib, along to the base of the shoulder blades. Still got that little toe into the inner thighs, whole foot still connects. Reach out through the front edge of the knees as you breathe in, and then as you breathe out, melt the spine bone by bone back down, relaxing those shoulders, releasing the spine to neutral. And do that again. So just keep working with that that feeling of really being able to roll your spine up and then reaching less of a bridge but more of a ski slope so it's a long incline as you inhale out through the front edge of the knees and then melt it bone by bone imagine your spine is a, a bicycle chain and every link is just rolling into and away from the floor in sequence each time just do that one more time Notice that you still have weight underneath the ball of the big toe, underneath the ball of the little toe, into the centre of the heel. That you've still got a little bit of tone to the inner edges of the thighs, still lifting up through the muscles of the pelvic floor, perhaps still noticing that tension in the abdominals. Stay soft and heavy in the breastbone. Take a breath in, really lengthen out the body. As you breathe out, roll your spine bone by bone back down. Release the spine at the end of the movement. And then toe heel your feet nice and wide and just drop your knees together. So you've made like a little teepee out of your legs. Take your arms out wide, keep the shoulders relaxed, and now allow your knees and your head to turn in opposite directions to each other. Your knees won't stay together as you do this. So it just gives you a nice easing rotation around that low back. When you're ready, roll over onto one side of the body, press into your hands and push up. Come up and take a seat. Now you can sit yourself up on a cushion or a couple of blocks if you've got them, but sit yourself up nice and tall. Any leg position other than cross-legged, so I don't want you to cross your legs. I like to sit in a prayer position, that may not suit you. You may prefer a straight leg or a bent leg, doesn't really matter. But you do want to get that feeling of really lifting up out of the base of the spine. It's very easy just to drop away and to slouch. And of course that makes the muscles in the back weak, it makes the muscles in the front of the body weak, and it does horrible things to your neck as well. So think about lifting up, feeling those muscles in the back of the body, just working a little to hold you in space. All right, and once we've got ourselves nice and firmly seated, bring your hands together, Thumbs onto the breastbone, chin slightly retracted, shoulders drawn down. Inhale, so take a breath in into the rib cage. And then as you exhale, just allow your ribs to move around to your left side. So your ribs will draw back and the opposite side will press forward. And you might want to turn your head a little bit as well. And then bring the chin back, bring the ribs back and change sides. So moving the ribs, so as I move around to the right, my right side of the rib cage is pulling back, my left side of the rib cage is moving forward, my pelvis is very still, and I might perhaps just turn my head a little bit towards the end of the movement. And then back to center. It's important that you do move your ribs first though, don't just turn your head. 
It is supposed to be a movement for the ribs and the thoracic area of the spine. Now, also notice whether this breathing seems to work for you. I always breathe out as I rotate. It's almost like I'm wringing myself out. I rotate, I breathe out, and then I breathe in to refill, replenish as I come back to center. You may find that that doesn't feel right for you. So try breathing in as you rotate and then breathe out as you come back to center. Okay, see if that works better for you. And just keep that going. So again, we keep that slight corset wrapping around the center of the body. We keep that sense of lifting up. We want to stabilize the pelvis. It's almost like the pelvis is set in stone. And what we're doing here is we're just gently wringing out those ribs. Those ribs, that area of the upper back where we get quite tight and we've spent too much time sitting, maybe at a computer or driving or just generally slumping down. We'll do this a couple more times. So choosing whether you breathe in or out as you rotate. Through to the rib cage though, remember, we're not moving down into the belly. And then bring it back to center, relax the hands and just take a little round forward if that works for you. Okay. Take the legs forward, sit back into your hands, give your legs a little shake out and, uh, and just see how that feels. So a very short little sequence of Pilates there, nothing too challenging, but hopefully it'll just help you to, uh, to stretch out a little bit, maybe free up some tensions and some tightnesses. If you've got any questions at all, please let me know and hopefully I will see you again soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye bye.